new chance to say, Jesus, you are the only way. My Savior, my Savior lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, and now I stand on what He did. My Savior, my Savior lives. Every day a brand new chance to say, Jesus, you are the only way. My Savior, my Savior Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name every blessing every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. On the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. And blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. Choose to say, oh, blessed be your name, and blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious
the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness drives to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God in age to age in age to age he stands and time is in his hand beginning and the end beginning and the end the God had three Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great.
Let me be singing when the evening comes. And bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your time is great and your heart is kind. On the front of your bulletin this morning, near the top, are a few pictures that form a collage. Those are photos of Rob's, Rob Zapatoski, Alina, I forget her last name, and photos from the ministry that we support through your donations of aluminum cans right out here, out of room, uh, our door rather, exit 7, I think it is but you'll see them out there. 
pop cans, and so on. These cans are taken by Gary Begg, one of our trustees, to a recycle center where money is received and sent overseas along with a $100 donation every month from our missions program to support the ministry of the First Baptist Church in Bronsk as they reach out to the street children of Russia. Now, I draw this to your attention today because of the tensions going on in that part of the world now. When I was a college student in 1969, we had at our chapel service a man who went by the nomenclature of Brother Andrew. I forget his full name, but Brother Andrew was a Bible smuggler. He had come from Romania, and his ministry was taking Bibles back behind the Iron Curtain to Hungary, Romania, Poland, and the Soviet Union in their languages and distributing them once he got through the, the Iron Curtain, distributing them to believers, first of all, because many did not have a Bible, and to those who were non-believers who might be interested in the faith. He asked us in that chapel service to pray that God would bring down the Iron Curtain so that someday there might be freedom to preach the gospel in that part of the world. I began praying then that God would do that. And 20 years later, in 1989, the Berlin Wall fell. The Soviet Union broke up. The Iron Curtain was no more. I have made seven trips to that part of the world, some to Ukraine, some to Russia. And when I am there, especially in Ukraine, only in Ukraine, I hear the Ukrainian Christians say, pray for us. We are afraid that someday Russia will come back and take us over and repress the freedoms that we have. Pray for us, pray for us, pray for us. When in Russia, the Russian Christians just simply say, pray for us that freedom will continue to preach the gospel and bring souls to Jesus. So I'm just simply taking the opportunity this morning to remind you that you have many brothers and sisters in Christ in both Ukraine and the Russian Federation, it's called, Russia. I've met them, I know they're there. I know that they're afraid. And I know that with the tensions that are going on in that part of the world now, they need our prayers. Will you please pray for them during this time? Will you please support through bringing your pop cans here? Don't just throw your pop cans in the garbage and set it out on the street. Put them in a different garbage sack and bring them down and bring them here. They go to support these street kids. In Russia, the standard of living is so low, frankly, that a child will get to a certain age and in many of those homes they are unable, now this doesn't happen in the Christian homes, but in many of those homes they're unable to support a child. So when that child is 10, 11, 12, he gets pushed out on the street. There are just hundreds of street children in Russia, kids who live day to day, hand to mouth, begging and doing other unmentionably vile acts just to survive. First Baptist Church of Bronsk has the ministry that we support through your pop cans and the recycling of them and the money we receive, bringing these children in, giving them a place to stay, food to eat, and teaching them the gospel of Christ. At any rate, that part of the world is in an uproar right now. Pray that God will bring peace and that the church will be able to advance in spite of those tensions and maybe even because of them. The offering that we receive today is for the ministry God has given us together here at the chapel in Marlboro. Thank you for your faithfulness in the giving of tithes and of offerings. Shall we pray? Dear Father, as we give today, we think of our brothers and sisters in Christ, those in Ukraine, Russia, Crimea. We pray for them. We don't know all the ins and outs and the politics, but we do know that they are people. And just like us, they have their fears, they have their desires, 
They are struggling to raise their kids, to make ends meet, to face each day with confidence and hope. And you give that. May you continue to give it. May these tensions create an environment in which the church might advance and the gospel be proclaimed boldly and people come to Jesus in greater numbers than even before. We pray that you will strengthen the churches. And as we give today, my prayer is that you will use these gifts for the advancement of the cause of Christ here in this community and through our missionary friends around the world. And this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your gift this morning. He loves to hear the wind sing as it whistles through the pines on mountain peaks. And he loves to hear the raindrops as they splash to the ground in a magic melody. And he smiles in sweet approval as the waves crash to the rocks in harmony. All creation joins in unity to sing to him majestic symphonies. But his favorite song of all is the song of the redeemed. When lost sinners now make clean, lift their voices loud and strong. Purchased by His blood, lift to Him a song of love. Nothing more He'd rather hear, not so pleasing to His ear, as His favorite song of all. He loves to hear the angels as they sing, Holy, holy is the Lamb. choirs in harmony lift up praises to the great I am Hallelujah. but he lifts his hands in silence when the weak is saved by grace begins to sing and a million angels listen as a newborn soul sings I have been reading That's his favorite song of all, is the song of the redeemed. When lost sinners now make clean, lift their voices loud and strong. When those branches by his blood, lift to him a song of So pleasing to his ear as his favorite song of all. It's not just melodies and harmonies that capture his attention. It's not just clever lines and phrases that causes him to stop and listen. But when any heart set free, washed him off by Calvary, begins to sing. That's his favorite. voices loud and strong when those branches by his blood lift to him a song of love nothing more he'd rather hear not so pleasing to his ear as his favorite song holy holy
Thank you, choir. Jim, uh, so appreciate that. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Before I really get started, I'm going to ask that you turn to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Then I'll ask that you put your bulletin in it and maybe set it to the side because it'll be a while before we get there. Well, I don't know what it's doing outside right now, but it, the sun was shining when I came to church. Isn't that nice? I, how many of you are tired of this winter? How many of you have loved it? Do you need help? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's been a tough winter. We've set, set some records. I know we have in Akron, where Carolyn and I live. For example, January the 7th, we set a record for the single biggest drop in temperature in one day. It dropped 55 degrees. Now, I hope we never break that record again. And I don't know about you, but uh, we've had so much snow, and I think my microphone is going off and on. Is it? No? It's okay? I don't know about you, but uh, I've run out of places to put the snow. So I started building a snowman. And I built a big one, and I think that by June, it will still be there. I am so tired of winter. And yet all through winter, I have been thinking of how blessed I am. Because you see, we've had food. We've had shelter. And we've been warm. I kept thinking about those people who lost their electric for an extended period of time. I kept thinking about those people who didn't have proper and adequate food, and thinking even especially of those people who were spending nights sleeping in parking decks and in storefront areas. How difficult that would be. But I hope you understand that that's not just simply a problem during the winter. That's a problem every day for a lot of people. For example, one out of every eight people in the world do not sit down to the kind of meal and food that you and I do. One out of every eight people do not have adequate food on a daily basis. And it's estimated that there are 100 million homeless people in the world. But I'm blessed. Bless. Blessed. Blessing. We're familiar with the terminology. We sing it. We ask for it. Oh Lord, bless me. God bless America. When someone sneezes, we say, God bless you. We speak of people who are blessed musically and people who are blessed athletically. Before we sit down and begin eating our food, so many times we, and we do all the time, thank you, Lord. We bless the food and ask for a blessing on ourselves. We know how to use the terminology. But do you consider yourself blessed? I want everyone, if, if you would, this morning with me, I want you to say the words, I am blessed. Are you ready? I am blessed. Did you choke on that at all? 
Do you think about that on a regular basis? Are those words really somewhat unfamiliar to you? I thought it was interesting even this morning and coming in and shook hands with Jim over here and I said, Jim, how you doing? And I don't know, did you read the bulletin? Is that what it was? I said, Jim, how are you doing? And his response was, I am blessed. Good for you, Jim. Good perspective. Are you blessed? You realize that some people, if they were asked that question, would treat it like a, an algebraic problem. Well, let's see. I have this many problems, and I have this many blessings, I think, negatives, positives, and so I'm going to subtract the negatives from the positives, and if I have enough positives over here, then yeah, I'm probably blessed. But I hope you understand, it's really not a math problem. It's an attitude. Think of the children of Israel for a moment. Think of those 40 years when they were going through the wilderness. They didn't need a GPS. God directed them everywhere they went. They didn't have to hunt for a grocery store. God provided the food. They didn't have to look for a place to buy clothing. Their clothing didn't wear out. God was providing for them, and yet for the whole time, they were grumbling and grumbling, and they never felt blessed. Blessed. Some form of that word appears 496 times in the Word of God. 388 times in the Old Testament, 108 times in the New Testament. I think that's interesting. More than three times more in the Old Testament than in the New Testament. Sometimes when it speaks of blessing, it is speaking about what man is receiving. The man is blessed. But sometimes it's referring to God. But there's a big difference there. I hope you understand that when people are blessed, they're helped. They're strengthened. They're benefited. They're better off. But there is nothing that you and I could do to help God. Oh, we get involved in ministry, we need to, but we're really not helping God. We give to ministry, but we're not really helping God. We can't strengthen Him. God is not better off because we bless Him. But let's kind of put that to the side for a moment. Let's just focus on people being blessed. Well, we do indeed sing about that. In fact, there's a song that was written, I believe it was by the Gaithers, and it goes like this. We are so blessed by the gifts from your hand. I just can't understand why you've loved us so much. We are so blessed. We just can't find a way or the words that can say, thank you, Lord, for your touch. When we're empty, you fill us till we overflow. When we're hungry, you feed us and cause us to know we are so blessed. Take what we have to bring. Take it all, everything. Lord, we love you so much. You know, there are lots of people who really couldn't sing that song. I mean, mean it. They just couldn't. But I'm not talking about people who are really very poor. I'm not talking about people who are really sick. I'm not talking about people who are really handicapped. I'm referring to people who have so much, but they don't feel blessed because of what they don't have. I was out not too long ago, and, and I happened to see, well, I didn't happen. I went to look at it. It's a wood carving machine. Oh, it is great. This machine that will carve wood. Oh, it is so beautiful. I, I've told Carolyn, I even dreamed about it one night. It's just such a, a 
beautiful piece of equipment, but can I say that I'm not blessed because I don't have it? Of course not. Can I say that I'm not blessed because I can't play all the instruments that people can up here? I marvel sometimes when I watch people play and when I see them playing one instrument one time and another instrument another time and why why don't I why don't I have some of that? And I listen to people when they sing and and when Jim sang this morning, Jim great job but I could never do what you did and and you're grateful that I'll never try but am I not blessed can I say that I'm not blessed because I may not be able to shoot a basketball as well as somebody else here or because I can't lay a brick or build a house or do a hundred other things Tell you, my friends, I am so blessed. And so are you. But I remember a day back years ago. I, I don't remember all the details, but isn't it interesting how some days just kind of stick out in, in our life? And I was having one of those days when it seemed like everything was going wrong. Do you ever have, who had? Do any of you have days like that when everything is going wrong? See, I felt I was unique there. I, it didn't matter what. It just wasn't. I had so much to do, and it just wasn't getting done. I wasn't feeling real good. It seemed like things were breaking down. And it seems like when that happens in our home, it's not one thing that breaks down, it's multiple things that break down. It seems like at the same time, I don't know, it may have been a sweeper, a leaky faucet, and car wasn't working, and, but problems were developing, responsibilities were increasing, and I was having a poor me day. Poor Don. Poor Don. And I tell you, I wasn't feeling blessed. I, I wasn't. And I don't know how it happened, but I came across two articles that day. I don't know if someone came into the office and placed them on my... I don't know. I don't know how it happened. But I had two articles. One was about a guy by the name of Charlie Henry. Charlie was 42 years old. He was going to school, he was married, he had two children. But 15 years before, Charlie was in a car accident. He wasn't driving, he was a passenger. When Charlie came to, he, he couldn't understand what had happened. He, he couldn't remember whether his friend, the driver, whether he was fooling around with French fries or, or the radio, what it was, but he could remember that they were going around a turn, lost control of the cart, and hit a pole. And Charlie hit the windshield. And it severed his spinal cord. Charlie became a quadriplegic. He was told that he would never walk again, he would never write again, he would never hold his children again in the way he had done in the past. He would have constant pain, he would spend his life in a wheelchair. Throughout the years of my ministry, I've had opportunity, I, I guess I can call it that, to see a lot of people who have gone through tragedies. And I've seen people respond to the tragedies in all kinds of ways. But what really attracted my attention to this article about Charlie was the fact that in spite of it all, he felt so blessed. Blessed. He recognized that he was, and I was feeling and acting like I wasn't. 
And that was so wrong. The second article was about a guy by the name of David Worrell. When David was 15 years old, he came down with rheumatoid arthritis. 30 years later, David could only move one part of his body. It was one finger. And with that one finger, he could turn on a recorder. He was paralyzed over the rest of his body. According to Dr. Floyd Faust, who wrote the article, David was also blind and he had difficulty even speaking. But David considered himself, himself blessed. Listen to this. This is a quotation from David Worrell. He says, and I quote, he says, well, Lord, if this is the size plot in life you staked out for me, let you and me together show the world what we can grow on it. Isn't that powerful? Well, Lord, if this is the size plot in life you staked out for me, let you and me together show the world what we can grow on it. I tell you, my friends, the more I think about the Charlies and the Davids in life, the more I realize how blessed I am. But to be honest with you, I shouldn't even need the Charlies and the Davids. Because I am so blessed. If a guy who can move only one finger, if a guy who can only move one finger can feel like he is helped by God, he is strengthened by God, he is privileged by God, he is benefited by God, he is better off by God, then how could I miss it? And how can you? Blessed. blessed. I didn't share with the first service. But Carolyn and I have a woman living with us right now. She has been since December 29th, I think it is, from Cairo, who is dying from cancer. We just celebrated her 47th birthday last week. She'll never see her 48th. But she's blessed. Let's turn to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 1. The Word of God says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Did you notice? It's bless the Lord, not us. That requires a huge shift in thinking. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, my total being. Bless Him. Remember, my friends, there's a difference here. When we're blessed, we're helped, we're strengthened, we're benefited, we're better off. But we cannot help God. We can't strengthen or benefit Him. He's no better off because of us. But the word blessed that appears here comes from the Hebrew word barach, which means to kneel. 
Well, it means the praise, it means thanksgiving. Sure, it means those, but more than that, it means to surrender. Now, we can praise God, we can thank God, we need to do that, but you understand we can do that in a moment's time and then just carry on with life, become preoccupied with other things. We come every week and we gather here. I trust to worship God and to praise Him. But some people, I suspect, when it's all over and go out the door and it's, it's done. And we can praise the Lord. We can thank Him in a moment's time. But to surrender. Submission. To come under His authority. That's ongoing. And so the psalmist writes in this passage, beginning with verse 2, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Let me paraphrase verse 2. It goes like this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and don't forget the blessings that he's given. We're blessed, but we don't always feel it. But we are blessed. But do you see the connection here? The connection between blessing God and us being blessed. God blesses first. And because we have been blessed, we need to bless Him. Because we have been blessed, we need to praise Him, we need to thank Him, we need to surrender to Him. I've seen people, and you have too, People who are always taking, the takers of life. They're so high maintenance. They're so wanting. It doesn't matter how much they get, they're never happy because they want more. They want to take everything. And even if they had everything, they still wouldn't be happy. But they never give thanks. They, they never show appreciation. But that's not true of David. David knew that he had been blessed tremendously. And as we read this psalm written by David, we find that the more he was blessed, the more he wanted to bless God. There's an absolute connection there. I hope you get that. The more we recognize that we are blessed, the more we will bless God. But if we don't recognize it, then it's not going to happen. We're not going to be blessing Him. The more we recognize that we are blessed by God, the more we will bless Him, and the more we will be willing to surrender, to submit to what He wants in our life. But there are two mind shifts, two mental shifts that need to take place. For some people, maybe for all of us. Number one, instead of focusing on what we have not received and maybe what we think we even deserve. It's amazing what we think we deserve. But instead of focusing on what we have not received and what we think we deserve, we need to focus on what we have. And I tell you, friends, we don't deserve most of it. 
And the second thing that we really need to do, again, mental shift, we need to shift from focusing on being the getter to being the giver. I want to be a giver of blessings. I want to be a giver of blessings. Forget about this getting all the time. I want to be a giver of blessings. I want to bless people. I want to bless people. I want to help them. I want to be benefit them. I, I want them to be better off. But first, we need to bless God. By coming under his authority. Now think about it for a moment. What is there in your life? What could you change? What could you do that you know would bless God? What act of thanksgiving could there be? What act of surrender could there be that you know you've been holding back from God? You know he wants. You know what he desires. But you're holding back. Look at verse 1 again, if you would, please. Verse 1, bless the Lord. Verse 2, bless the Lord. Verse 20, bless the Lord. Verse 22, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord twice in that verse. Eighteen times in the Word of God we find that phrase. It appears once in Deuteronomy, once in First Chronicles, and once in Nehemiah, but it appears 15 times in the Psalms. Bless the Lord. We do sing it. We did this morning. But honestly, how often do we think it? Well, I'm really going to go out and I'm really going to bless the Lord today. How often do we discuss it? How often do we plan it? How often do we do it? How? I think that would make an interesting discussion around the lunch table today. Sit down and talk about how the Lord has blessed you. How has he blessed you even in the past week? And then talk about how you have blessed him. And even how you plan to bless him. Let me read, starting with verse 2, once again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Don't forget. Don't forget. I seem to be forgetting more and more things. I, please encourage my heart. How many of you are having that problem too? You're forgetting more and more things. But I hope I never forget what the Lord has done for me. The word forget that appears in this passage is the Hebrew word shacha, which means to mislay or to be oblivious. It appears a number of places in the Word of God. It speaks of that which happens to us many times when we're handling that which is unimportant to us for the moment. So we get home, we've made our way into the house, we don't need our keys anymore, so we put our keys down. And then when we need them again, we can't find them. We can't find our glasses. We, yeah, I'm getting nods. I, yeah. David said, forget not all, not all thy benefits. And the first benefit that he mentions is forgiveness. 
I can't forgive the fact that the Lord in his grace has forgiven this guy. Bruce Larson in his book, Setting Men Free, writes about a cartoon that appeared in the New Yorker magazine back a number of years ago. And in that cartoon, there was a picture of a father who was exasperated. He was talking to his prodigal son. And as he's talking to his prodigal son, he says to his son, this is the fourth time we've killed the fatted calf. Do you get the picture? The son came home, and then he went off wandering again and, and wandering. And Bruce Larson makes this statement. He says, that's what God has done for us over and over again in our life. He's killed the fatted calf. And he said, come. That's not a statement of permission for wandering. It's simply a statement of the greatness of the forgiveness of God. He loves you. And he loves me so much. And he has blessed us so wonderfully. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. We've been blessed. Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and all you've done, and you're so giving and so wonderful, and thanks. Father, I know I've been blessed. I, I have so very, very much. And with blessing comes responsibility. I need to share the blessings with others. But Father, the greatest responsibility, and it shouldn't maybe even be looked at that way as a responsibility. It should just simply come from my heart that I've been blessed so much by you that I want to bless you in return. That I want to submit, submit my life, submit my choices, my relationships, my language, my marriage, submit everything to you. For Father, every day of my life, our life, we demonstrate how much we recognize that we have been blessed. May we not be like the children of Israel who got so much and grumbled even more. May we seek to be the people that you have called us to be. Father, there are perhaps some here today who have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. They can come and receive that forgiveness of their sin today. And along with that, the guarantee that they will spend eternity with you in heaven. Father, if I had nothing else, what a blessing that is for me. Thank you for my salvation. I pray, Father, for those here today who don't know Christ and would desire to receive him. May they come and join be here in front to receive Christ by faith. Maybe there are those, Father, who had come today to renew commitment or those who had come to present themselves for membership. 
but may they come for your glory to bless you in Christ's name. Amen. Won't you come? God bless you. Won't you stand in Your rich in love and your slow to anchor. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Frequently, uh, I suppose, more than frequently, when we come to people and we'll maybe shake hands with them and we'll say, how are you doing? My normal response is this, just terrific. I said it so many times. In fact, my one neighbor says, I'm not even going to ask you anymore. But he did make this statement. How can you be just terrific every day? To which I have said to him and to others who have asked too, my sin's forgiven. I'm going to spend eternity with the Lord. Everything else is pretty much irrelevant. How you doing, guys? You know, it doesn't count when there's such a delay. <laughs> <laughs> You've been blessed. Let's show it. Father, thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for your many blessings. Father, I don't know what the circumstance of everyone here today, what it is. Some are not in as good health as others. Some financially not as well off as others. There are all kinds of things and situations, Father, and yet we are all blessed. Blessed by you. I do pray, Father, for that person, if there's someone here who has not received Christ, because they're missing the greatest blessing of all. Not just for the hereafter, but even for here. Oh, Father, may we seek to please you with our life, with our walk, with our words, with our choices, with everything. May we demonstrate to the world that we are blessed by our God. May we bless you by coming under your authority to your glory in Christ's name. Amen. Maranatha, and have a great week. God bless you.